Hello everyone, how you doing today? Hope you're doing fine. I trust that you're as snug as a bug in a rug in your home and uh, you're strong physically, alert mentally, stalwart spiritually, fired up for God, ready to go. Amen. Take on the world. Let me just share with you what happened Monday night at prayer. We had an awesome time. You that were watching, I hope you got to see it. It's towards the end of the prayer service, but um, we had uh, an instant healing, instant, take place. And, uh, of course, we were all excited by that. It seemed like to me that the anointing of God came on me stronger than ever. And I just sense a boldness rising up in me. You know me. Uh, I try to do what the Bible says. I believe God raised up a church that's triumphant and that uh, we should not sit back and wait for the enemy to attack us. We should attack him. We should always be on the attack and uh, running over him. He will not prevail against the church that the Lord Jesus Christ is building. I know you can say amen to that. Uh, also, uh, Sister Judith uh, Kathea had a vision, and it was interesting, and I can't wait till the next time she's in service where we can um, have her give that testimony. It, it was a blessing to me. Okay, this morning, it was interesting. I had every tense, all intents and purposes of being here tonight and worshiping God with the saints, the faithful that come and with you by uh, Facebook or YouTube Live. Uh, but in my just meandering around this morning, meditating, I'm always meditating, just something inside of me. And it, I tell you, it was, it's what you re is referred to as the still small voice. Sometimes that still small voice is so still and so small, you can uh, barely hear it. And I barely heard it, but I picked up on it. Uh, and something inside of me said, uh, you need to counsel a service for tonight. Well, that's not me, and you know that. But I have learned, and I have learned the hard way, that it pays to listen to the voice of your spirit. Just a little small something I got that said, uh, and of course, we can all start speculating, but it just so happened that I contacted about four different individuals, none of them knowing I was contacting each other, and every single one of them had the same witness this morning. So, scriptures being true, and they are, for as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Uh, why are we counseling service? Not out of fear, of course, none of that. We're doing fine, but by direction of the Spirit of God. I don't know. It could be many things. Uh, it could be the fact that, um, and I sense this, that the devil is just trying to lay a trap for us. And he always wants us to be at least two steps, if not more, ahead of the devil. And that's what I want to be, and I know you do too. So in obedience to that, I contacted Joel and said, contact everybody we can, and we call folks and let them know. Uh, that we're not having service tonight, and I trust that we'll be able to get in touch with all those who are not uh, on email or uh, and and not heard this message yet. So anyhow, call everybody you can and let them know that. Uh, we miss you, a lot of you, and it's hard to look out upon the congregation and not see you there, but I understand. Um, you are walking in your level of faith or whatever it may be. And uh, we're just excited. And I've heard no negative reports about anybody being sick. We've had one brother who was in a contact with someone, but um, they just uh, decided to quarantine themselves. And of course, uh, it's happened at a good time anyhow. So uh, not that it was good, but uh, it was appropriate that they do so. And I totally agreed with them. So it's good to protect our people. I want you healthy. I want you strong. I want you happy. Uh, we're supposed to be full of joy, and, and that's what uh, I want for you. So let me, let me stress this to you. The Scripture says, for as many as led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. It is very important 
that we develop our faith life to where we are led constantly, daily, even in the minor details of life, uh, led by our spirit. The Holy Ghost that lives in us, that's how God lives in us. He speaks to us. He communicates with us through our spirits. And we pick that up sometimes in our mind. And then sometimes, but I have to say that for the last several days, there's been like a little sense of foreboding or something. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I felt very good after I made the decision to counsel the service. But I thank God that even though it was a still small voice, it's still his voice and he speaks to us. And one of the things that's really blessing me is the fact that you are being led by the Spirit of God. And I hear people say things and it's confirmation to me. So you're a blessing to me also and I trust that we're still being a blessing to you. Um, this coming Sunday, as far as I know, we intend to have resurrection service. Uh, I'm taking one day at a time. I may, I don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. All I know is that Jesus is Lord. And this is a great, probably the greatest day we could in our, this is better than Christmas, folks. Christmas was great, but celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and giving him all the glory, honor, and praise, sharing with the people what he actually has done for us is so important, so important. And... Uh, I understand that some people are saying, well, things have changed and things are never going to go back to, to the same, be the same. Uh, I truly trust that the assembling, to get, assembling together of the brothers and the sisters in Christ, the family, because you're family. And if, if you're not here, it hurts me. It bothers me. But I'm a big boy and I'll get over it. Uh, I just want you to know I love being around my family. I love being around my loved ones. And I consider you more real to me than any natural family that I could ever have. So we intend to be here and to have service um, on resurrection uh, service on this Sunday. Remember, this is Passover week. A lot of things have been prophesied. One of the things in particular was uh, Brother Tracy Cook who evidently is, that man flows into word of knowledge uh, like nobody I've known of since I read about William Branham in the same manner. And he prophesied the first of the year in January that there was a great shaking coming. Well, <laughs> it has run all over the world and we know that, a tremendous shaking. But he said during the Passover week, couple things he said in particular was, number one, it's going to get warm. Well, today out there, it is warm. And I know it's got to be in the 90s, if not very close to it. But he said the sun will move closer to the earth, bring a supernatural heat, and the, uh, it will, the virus cannot exist in that condition. And then from during that week, and of course, here we are in in the week, and uh, the virus will begin to diminish. Well, I'm excited about that. Pray with me as I pray uh, for our president. I believe the economy is so important now, and people need to go back to work. Uh, pray for strength in the people, and pray for our leaders that they'll make the right decisions, and that they will not listen to the wrong people because there are people, you know, I, I just recently received a, a note from or a Facebook post from a friend that said he's not into conspiracy theories and about and all of this. You know some folks, uh, let me just give you a truth here. If it's true, it's not a conspiracy. That means it's real. And there are things going on that most of us know nothing about. We have no idea what's going on. And sooner or later, it has to come out. But our president needs prayer. He needs a boldness to make the decisions that he needs to make and quit listening to people, get over his pride, and sometimes his arrogance. Yes, 
and make the right decisions because I believe he's got the country, the people, most of the people's backing. Uh, we're, we've got his backing. You and I are praying for him, aren't we? Constantly. So I'm looking forward to the virus dissipating and everything getting back. Uh, I don't want to see the church change. Uh, I want to see the, other than getting fired up and ready to do what we all have to do. Talking to Pastor Rentrup this morning, and he shared with me how the, he had spent so much time with the Lord this morning, but he said, Pastor, we have got to get the people involved. It's a team effort. Most of you uh, have come out of organizations that a lot of you that uh, they talked about team ministry. Together, experience in the ministry, but yet others have said, together, everyone achieves more. These are true statements as a team. And he quoted to me how many Christians are on this planet. And I thought, my God, I never stopped to think about that. If we all work together, if we all do our part, if we all decide that we're going to go, we're going to preach, we're going to proclaim, we're going to cast out uh, devils, uh, we're going to lay hands on the sick. Uh, and while we go, uh, if we happen to pick up a serpent, it's not going to bother us. We're immune. You're immune, immune from the virus. You're immune from anything. Read a, where another fellow said that if you're sitting around quoting the 91st Psalm, well, I guess I'm guilty because I'm quoting it. I have made the Lord my habitation, and I know you have also. And because of that, he said, no evil will befall me. No evil. That's you. That means you. And neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. And wherever you are, you're there. God is there with you. He's protecting you. No fear. Remember I talked this past Sunday? God's not given us spirit of fear, but a what? Power. Power. Stir yourself up. Stir up that gift that's in you and go demonstrate and release that power. Somebody needs what you have and you're a well qualified. Now, I'll close this with this. Let me give you a little nugget that I got yesterday from the Lord. Uh, we should all be making regular confessions of God's word. Why? Because he told us in Proverbs uh, and in Psalms, Psalms he said he sent his word and healed them. And then in Proverbs 4, he called it medicine. And we're to tend to it, climb our ear to it, let it not depart from thine eyes, because it creates an image uh, for their life to those that find it. Find scriptures that cover your case, right? And then he said it's medicine or cure or health to all their flesh. It's a cure. It is the most sure cure there is a word. Well, we should make constant confessions of word of God's word. You know, there's the confession of the sinner. There's a confession of the uh, sinner that Jesus is his Lord. There's uh, confessions we make of sin that we commit. We're to confess that. But there, the Bible says a whole lot more about the positive side, the confession of the believer. And he tells us death and life in the power of the tongue. I quote 91st Psalm. I'm going to keep right on quoting it and putting it before God. Here's the key. When you make your confessions, a lot of times I'll have my wife, she'll sit across me and, and she will read the confession out to me and I got my eyes closed. But I yesterday, I started seeing myself standing right in front of the throne. Of course, when I'm looking, you know Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. That's what the Bible says. So God would be on my right and Jesus would be on my left. Every time the confession said, Lord, I would look at Jesus and make that confession because I'm returning his word to him. Picture yourself right there in front of his face and you are making that solid confession. And then he says, Heavenly Father or God, then look at, turn and look at God and make that confession of faith. These are things that he's already said about you and he's waiting for you to say it. But it just seems like it did something to me to know that I was right in front of him. Wow. Wow, I love it. I love it. And I, and I felt so good all on the inside. 
after I'd made those confessions. Uh, just seemed like I had taken a giant leap, so to speak. So, praise God. Have I told you lately that I love you? I really do. And I mean it with all my heart. And I know you love me. I sense it. 